Hello and welcome to the Oikos Family Podcast, episode number 74. Today I have Sylvie with me again, although she's not actually with me with me. She's in her house and I'm in my house because we, we've been responsible people with when it comes to the restrictions on us at the moment regarding the pandemic. So let me just tune in to Sylvie. Sylvie, are you there? Hi, Sonia. How are you? There she is. Hello, Sylvie. Um, I'm very good. How are you? Oh, we're good. Thank you. How's all your family? They're all fine. Good. Everybody healthy? Yes. Luckily, praise the Lord. And how's, how's life in the pandemic for you guys? Um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's all right. It's carrying on a bit long now for everybody. Like, you know, even for us introverted people, we like kind of feeling like, hey, we want to start talking to people now. But um, yeah, life just carries on as per usual. We're doing our Bible and we're doing our our lessons and yeah, we're just carrying on. Must be different for you guys though in Oikos, like with all the regulations. Yeah, it is very different and we have all kinds of new challenges that we didn't have before. But I said to somebody last night, because I was on a Skype conference call with them, and I just said to them that even though the challenges are so difficult, we are actually finding that we are better for them. In that, you know, we we ex- experiencing the growth of the challenges and the, um, I don't know. I just I have a sense that we're all going to come out of this better people on the other side and a better planet and better people and. I don't know, I just feel like everything's going to be better. I know that's not what a lot of people think because people are really suffering with the economy and and all of that, but that's one side of the suffering. And, you know, I think also the other tremendous sadness is the loss of people. Um, this morning I heard of a cousin of mine who has passed, and that is just desperately sad. So, you know, you can't say you're better for that, but... You know what I mean? I mean, there are a lot of things in this um, challenge, in this pandemic that I'm experiencing is helping us to to be better. You know, we're having to look at things differently, consider people differently, have consideration for, you know, in a new way. I mean, just like what you've said now, you introvert people and you like being on your own, but actually you're starting to value others and being with others now. It's taken all this time Maybe if the pandemic was lifted sooner and the restrictions were lifted sooner, you wouldn't have arrived at the place of, you know, just feeling that value of actually the social side of life. Do you agree or not? Oh, yes, absolutely. No, and there's there's blessings everywhere in in this in the challenge. And we'll definitely all come out of of this pandemic at the other side, changed people. And um, yeah, definitely for the better. And one of the things that can be for the better, which are, we, you and I touched on last time we were chatting on a podcast, and we were speaking about board games and playing board games. And then right at the end of that podcast, you chatted about Read Aloud. And I've thought about it a lot since then, because we said, well, we've chatted so much on this particular podcast. Let's save the Read Aloud chat for our next podcast. And so here we are at our next podcast. And from the last podcast to this podcast, I've been thinking about the read aloud. And I was thinking there too, you know, people maybe will have more opportunity now. I don't know. I'm just being a little bit presumptuous, but but perhaps people, families, parents will have more opportunity, more time to um, have time for read aloud. And then if they do have, they maybe will start experiencing the value of read aloud in a, in a greater way than they have before. What do you think? Right, I I agree, and I also think that maybe now with with all the challenges, people are actually going to be a bit more intentional about um, reading to their children. Um, it's it's not always about oh I don't have enough time. It's also like you know how are you using the time that you have available? Yeah, true. And so now that we are having all these challenges, maybe people can be a bit more intentional about picking up that book and snuggling on the couch. Mm. You know, you say be more intentional. It is actually another theme that we've been running with for a couple of years now, intentional parenting, you know, and being intentional about ha- making time to have a treasure hunt. Remember, we touch on that every now and then. It seems like this year is the year to 
really be digging for those treasures because there's so so much crisis around us, really. You know, there's so much suffering and so much sadness. And, and so we need to try and find the treasures because it'll be easy to, you know, fall into darkness very quickly if we focus too much on on the crisis. So we have to be intentional about looking for the treasures. And the one treasure is this read aloud time. When I was thinking about it between last podcast and this one, I was wondering, I wonder if Sylvie experienced read aloud as a child. Did you have read aloud time with your family when you were a child and growing up? No, not at all. That's It's so very sad, but no, there was never a time where my parents picked up a book and read it to us. It's very sad. So now, that is different to you now because that is something that you are very intentional about. You guys, your family, you do a lot of read aloud time, don't you? Yes, we try and do read aloud every day. Um, in our family, it's more my husband who reads aloud to the children. It's a, a whole story how that started. But I think it's it's definitely the exception where we're grabbing an early night without read alouds. Um, the children will definitely say, oh, you know, one more chapter, one more chapter. So, yeah. We try and do it every day. So now your children are growing up with Read Aloud, but you grew up without parents um, having read, you know, you having Read Aloud time in your family. I'm just wondering now about how different those two pictures look because my experience in childhood was um, having Read Aloud time. My parents did, we did have a night a week for Read Aloud and we had another light night a week when we listened to a radio station. <laughs> Before TV days, um, <laughs> there was a radio program at seven o'clock on Friday night. And, you know, we all had an early dinner so that we could be finished by seven. And then we could all sit around the radio and listen to this radio station. It was quite quite interesting when I was thinking about it, how how different it is now. But anyway, I grew up with that sort of real intentional parenting. My parents were very intentional about their read aloud time and playing family board games and doing puzzles and In fact, when I was pondering on it, I was thinking, now, what books do I remember that my mother read aloud to me? And would you believe it? But I actually remember her reading the encyclopedia to me. (laughs) My my grandfather, (laughs) one year, my grandfather gave us this big, fat encyclopedia. You know, not not like a um, one for every letter of the alphabet. It was just one encyclopedia. Um, and it was so interesting. And she used to take this huge encyclopedia out and sit down and she'd read just randomly out of it something, something of interest. And for some reason, that really has stuck with me. That's what I, one of the first books that popped into my mind when I thought of my mother reading aloud to us was this big green giant encyclopedia, you know. So now that you, you know, you didn't grow up with being read aloud to, but your children are growing up with being read aloud to. What? Why would you say there's value in it that you're finding now that you felt you missed as a child? Oh, there's so much value in read aloud. I don't even know where to start. Um, I think that um, one of the biggest blessings in read aloud is the, the time you spend on the couch together, snuggling and sharing the story. And then there's all the things you learn from the story. There's just, just really no end to the blessings, in my opinion, when it comes to read aloud. Um, now, when you mentioned your radio program earlier, I do remember that my parents bought us um, books that came with cassette tapes. Do you remember cassette tapes? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right so so a thing that me and my, my my siblings did do was listen to those cassette tapes over and over and over and over and they were full with um it was like fairy tales and um just little short stories so we we did in in that way we did get stories but it wasn't with my parents it wasn't okay. them reading to us we just had the box with cassette tapes and it was like pick a cassette and just sit and listen to it. And we had the book to go with it. And you sit and page through the book and look at the pictures as the cassette was going. And now when I look at my husband and he sits with the children and and reads a book, that is a completely different picture than sitting there listening to your cassette tape by yourself or with your siblings. Mm. There's this family bonds that grows and and, um, that gets fostered by spending that time together, sharing the same stories, sharing the same memories. You know, it's absolutely amazing for us. You know, you talk about the same stories and the same memories. 
Um, I think that's what stands out to me as a ch- if I think of my childhood and me being read aloud to. And then if I think of me as a parent reading aloud to my children, it's two different experiences, obviously. But the childhood one, um, I, I grew up with a family of only boys. I was the only girl in the family. And we had I had one brother that was very uh, fidgety, you know, so he didn't know how to sit still. And read aloud was a time for my mother to encourage him to to learn how to sit still. And not, not that he had to sit on his hands and be still and listen to the story, but more just not charging around and climbing the tree and jumping around and <laughs> like, he, like he was just doing all the rest of the time. Um, so this time of read aloud, actually, I remember so well whereby we were having to encourage, all of us would have to encourage him to, to use this time to just be still and just to sit and listen to mom reading the story. And uh, that that comes to mind when I think about my childhood read aloud times, and that's just one area that I remember that being of value to that particular brother because he was having to learn, you know, how to sit still. And read aloud was about the only time that that could be really well trained in him. So that that's one memory of just we, if we're thinking of the value, um, there's so much value. The best one being the memories. I mean, I've as you know, have lost some of my brothers. And so for me to have these wonderful memories now of the time that we had in our childhood to to sit and have read aloud time and to sit and have family time, they're very, very precious to me now, as you can imagine, you know, versus if I hadn't had that time, I don't know how that would be feeling right now if I didn't have such wonderful fond memories to, um, to be pondering on now that I don't have them here on earth. But the fact is, is that my my mother and father created those memories for us when we were growing up. And I think the meaning and the value of that has been so great to me that I know that I have wanted to carry that through to passing on to our own children. So when I was raising our children, read aloud was a huge part of our everyday, like hours and hours. But it was actually not only just because I had discovered this wonderful value of read aloud because my mother read aloud to us, but it was because we had chronic illness. And so if you've got a child suffering in bed, there's not much you can do but read aloud, you know. So we always used to start with the word because that's our favorite and spend time in the word and then move on to a book and then, you know, read read that, read aloud time while you had a child that was, you know, in bed or suffering or struggling with health. So it, it meant that our read aloud time um, was very, very extended every day. And because of that, I have from that now experienced huge value that has come out of that. That wasn't because I was being in, doing intentional parenting or because I, I was um, aware of how wonderful it would be if I added more time to our read aloud every day. Um, I didn't. I wasn't aware. Um, even though I'd come from a household where I had been where I had experienced as a child being read aloud to. Um, it wasn't that that caused me to be convicted to read aloud to my own children, and yet my circumstances caused me to spend a lot of time and read aloud. So what I'm just thinking about all of that is, is when I ask our adult children now what do they value of being home educated, read aloud will be right up there on their list, you know. Um, that is just one of their very fond memories of the read aloud. And there's so much more that comes from that, you know, the literature, the vocabulary, the the training, the care. Like you've said, you know, when you're sitting, listening to a book that your husband's reading aloud, all of you are experiencing that same story together, the characters in the story and so on. Don't you find that your children, um, you know, that you, you hear things from your children, how they would respond and react to circumstances or situations by what they're hearing in the story. Do you find that happens? Yes, it absolutely happens. And sometimes um, stories, they get acted out and dramatized. And oh. I, I remember reading reading the, um, the Boxcar Children. I think it's one of the little books. Um, so yes. Dad read it out loud. He actually recorded his own like voice reading he made it the he made an audiobook for the children so they okay. could play it again and again and again. And then for months and months and months the children were playing boxcar children in the garden. 
And it's like all oh, these things they come up with and tell you. And it, it's just, it, it does not stop with just reading the book. Um, it definitely, stuff gets brought up um, of things that they read. And then it's like, oh, we're playing this or we know that or remember when we read this. Mm. So it it's definitely has a, has a big impact, um, all these stories. And um, I was just thinking like, when you were talking about the character training when, that happens when you read aloud, there's so many things. It's like you, we have um, a big sort of age gap between our children. So our children that are youngest, um, sorry, books that are our youngest understands and enjoys reading is not the same as books my older children enjoy. So we, we generally have like two sessions. We have like a picture book we read. And then we have like a chapter book we read. So they need to learn to wait turns because you have to wait until daddy gets to the book that you want to read. And then you have to pay attention when daddy reads it loud. Because when you talk and you're like causing nonsense and you're not following the story. And um, oh, what's another thing? Like picking the next book. They have to decide together which is the next story they want daddy to read aloud. So there is... There is just so much. So when you ask me the question of the value of the read aloud, there's just so much that comes to my mind that I just go like, oh, I don't know where to start. Yeah, I actually feel the same way. And you, I'm sitting here while you're talking, thinking about the boxcar children, because, you know, would you believe it? Um, our children also played the boxcar children game, whatever that is. They also used to, they also used to call it, you know, they would go out in the garden and they would come back, you know, you call them in and what have you been playing? We've been playing the boxcar children. It it's just like yes, exactly. Exactly. And when when friends came, oh no, they're gonna have to show them this game. It's called the boxcar children game. And it was all it was the same thing. It was all from the boxcar children. And I remember that was from our orange lattle. They read the the boxcar children and and the uh, the same thing happened with us with the Little House series. You know the Little House book series, the the Little yes, House on the Prairie. Yes. The same thing happened with those books. You know, I'd read one, and the next thing there would be games being played um, that were about that story. Um, and I'm just wondering now, you know, if we if this can be achieved in another way. And I'm I'm realizing obviously children just play. That's what they naturally do. They don't need to have a story read aloud for their play to be wonderful and memorable. But I think what happens with the read aloud is, as you're saying, it sort of unifies, you know, it's sort of, it. Um, they, they all are on the same, in the same wavelength. They all have heard the same story. It's not one child reading a story that they like and another one reading their own book and there's not that sort of uniting. Um, but if they've, if dad has read to all of them, the boxcar children, now they all know the same story. And I think that's where the value comes in. Um, it, it, I suppose it could also happen if each child read that story themselves. But, you know, as we know, you can't have an older child reading a book at their level and then the younger child reading that same book that they are actually not at that level yet. But if a parent is reading right. the book, then that actually immediately creates that sort of united um, scenario, which maybe doesn't happen otherwise. So maybe that's maybe that's just why we've experienced such value in the in watching the children play after we've read read a specific <laughs> book aloud to them. It's so delightful, isn't it? Absolutely. I think what what happens is that because we've read the book, they have the narrative in their in their mind of how the how the game is supposed to go. Right. Whereas if there's no if there's no book and and they just make up their own game, then you I see it over and over in my children. Inevitably one of the children is like, you know, the boss of the game. They come up with the rules and they come up <laughs> with how it's going to be played and then the rest of them are just doing what this one child says. But um and they're still having good fun, but it is different when it's based on a book because then you can't change the story. This the the entire game is is based on this story. So everybody knows where we're going with this game. There are no surprises like like you have in 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 games that is not that just comes. You know, sometimes I can tell that you know one child wants to go this way with the game, and another child rather goes that way, and. You know, mm. Then we have other character issues to deal with. But when it's based off a book, everybody's just on the same page. I think that's, 
you know, you put it really well is when you say as well that they're following the same narrative. And I think that's where the key is. You know, they're all following the same narrative. And as you say, there's no disputing it. This is this is what the story is, and this is now, and they all take on different characters in the story, and that character in the story, this is the kind of person they were. It can't, like you're saying, you can't have a boss of the game, you know, <laughs> um, when when they're playing, when the play is based on that narrative. I think that's that's a very good way of putting it. I hadn't actually thought of it like that before. Today in today's podcast, this is what we wanted to talk about and about reading aloud, and I just. I want to encourage anybody who's listening and the parents who are listening and whoever's listening, grandparents, auntie, uncle, doesn't matter, family member, you know, if there's somebody listening to this podcast and they can be encouraged to pick up a book and gather the children and start reading aloud, I think everybody will be blessed. I I believe there will be blessing that will come from that. I'm sure you agree, don't you, Sylvie, that people will be blessed, everybody. Yes, I, I absolutely agree. And if I can just add one more thing, to this line of thinking and uh, that is to not forget that you know the bible is such a wonderful book to read aloud with your family it's the most important thing that you can do it's the most wonderful gift you can give to your children to sit and read the bible with them Um, you can read all the storybooks in the world if you don't read the bible out loud then it's all a little bit in vain anyway so that's what i would like to you know, really emphasize that we must not forget the Bible. Do you know what I want to add to that is the fact that I got a treasure the other day. And, you know, I've told you this before. When you send me a photograph of something that's happening in your children's lives, what a blessing it is and what a treasure it is. So it's like a treasure in my day. So you you basically send me little treasures. So you sent me this photograph the other day of your four children sitting around the kitchen table or the dining room table, wherever it may have been, veranda or whatever, and there was dad sitting. And every one of the children had their Bible open in front of them. And there was one space that had a Bible without somebody in the seat. And that was obviously mom because she was taking the photograph. (laughs) Yeah. Or making the tea or whatever she was doing. But I I was so blessed by that. But, you know, should I tell you what really, really stood out for me in that photograph was the look on the children's faces. There was something, if you go back and look at that photograph very deeply, I just looked at it and looked at it, and I just noticed something in their eyes and something on their faces. There was like a, it, it, joy doesn't actually describe it. It wasn't joy like they were happy because they were having fun. It wasn't that kind of joy. There was something else. There was a, a sincerity and a deepness and a contentment. I'm trying to describe what I saw in those children's faces. And I just thought, wow, wow. You know, if that had, as you said, that had just been a storybook, you know, just reading a storybook, they would clearly be enjoying it because, as we've discussed before, you don't have children that say, no, I don't want you to read aloud. Well, in actual fact, a mom at one mom's retreat did tell me that her her child told her she doesn't want her to read aloud. (laughs) She wanted to read the book herself. So so that one didn't didn't go well. But, um, but, in the, the picture that I saw of your husband, and this was just a few days ago, I think. Yes. He was reading. He, he must have been doing a Bible study. Oh, I know what else was fantastic about this treasure was the fact that you said it's lunchtime and we haven't stopped Bible study. <laughs> and you, hadn't got, you <laughs> yes. hadn't got to anything else. That was such a normality in our lives. You know, we would start with Bible study and just not stop because there was so much to gain from it. And it sounds so serious when we say Bible study, you know, but it was literally just reading from the Word and then discussing and reading and talking about it and reading. And I know our circumstance was quite unusual in the fact that I was extending Bible study because we were doing an infusion and the infusion was going to take a few hours. And so we did a Bible study and read a story and did some art or whatever we did. But here, what was what blessed me about your photograph is you were just having a normal day, an everyday day. It wasn't, a, it wasn't that you were doing Bible study because um, one of your children was having a blood infusion and, you know, this is the thing to do. Now, that was my story. My story was um, we were doing extended Bible study because of that, so I thought. But then when when that wasn't the case, such as we weren't doing an infusion on that day, then we had received so much blessing from the time of experiencing when we had had extended Bible study that that, <laughs> that, 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 that then 
<laughs> just became the norm for us, you know. So I, I was just blessed, blessed, blessed because of the fact that here was your family not having reason to only do Bible study all day or morning, but you did anyway. And you were blessed by it. Am I guessing right? Yes, absolutely. Although I don't know if we didn't have a reason to do it. I think it is the most important thing to do. Yes. Um, but I, I understood what you meant. So, so, but it is the most important thing to do. So we, we like to start with it. And yeah, that was that picture was Monday, this, this week Monday. Um, it, it was well past lunchtime and we still had, <laughs> we were still in our pajamas. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> doing Bible study <laughs> and then it, it it felt it it didn't feel like um you know you, you could get stressed out because well, you haven't done your 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 formal studies yet or there's mm -hmm. still so much to do it was just such a relaxed exactly like this this was just you know how it's supposed to be so I snapped the picture and I send it I send it to you because I was like well I want to share my blessing <laughs> well thank you thank you for sharing the blessing and I, I really, if I have to be honest, I must say that actually I did extended Bible studies because we were going through suffering. Like you say, there was a reason. That was my reason. We were going through suffering and there was only one way, one place to turn to, and that was the Word. So I used to grab it and I used to just, we used to spend time there because that is what helped us to get through our suffering, was spending time in His Word. But what blessed me about your picture was, as you say, there wasn't that need that sort of reason and yet it is God God is God's reason should be enough it should be that he wants us to get into his word every day it shouldn't be that we're getting into it because we've got suffering you know what happened with us is we started because of the suffering spending so much time in the word and then we just carried on when the suffering when we were through that valley we carried on with that that model or that habit what what a good habit to have to spend so much time in the Word that it becomes actually your priority. And once you've experienced what you're talking about, the blessing and the peace and no stress, you weren't feeling at lunchtime, oh my goodness, we haven't done maths or language yet, uh, from what I gather. You weren't having those feelings. No, not at all. And then I mean, if I can just share what happened after that picture when we, when we finished up, um, the children, e every single one of them went to their dad gave him the biggest hug imaginable and they just said daddy that was amazing sure that was amazing so oh it yeah. just made my heart just so happy yeah that was that was that was really great well I, I think that we should stop right there because I just think it's let's stop on that beautiful blessing what a lovely picture I'm, I'm just imagining how much God must be smiling upon that you know, just seeing that picture, that's thats his heart right there, you know, really. And I just really want to encourage pa parents to sit with that picture and have that picture, sitting with them and staying with them and acting upon it. And I really hope that this podcast has just encouraged those that are listening. And Sylvia, I really appreciate you being there and that we can just chat about these things because it's so, so nice. It's so wonderful. I'm, I feel so blessed to have this Sonia and Sylvie series that we're doing because it, it's exciting. I look forward to them and I love chatting to you and you've got so much to give, you know, and I just really value what you have to give. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. It's really humbling to hear you say that. And it's an absolute joy and a pleasure to be doing this podcast with you. Wonderful. So we're going to do another one, are we? Should we? Are you up for the next one? Absolutely. Let's just pray that our um, internet connection holds. <laughs> yes, let's hope. Let's hope and pray because we. this is episode 74. So we'll do episode 75 and we'll take it episode by episode and we'll just hope and pray and trust that we can keep them going. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And uh, we ask the people who are listening to please let us know if you'd like us to continue sharing with you in this way. How are these Sonia and Sylvie series podcasts going? Are you are they of value to you? Would you like us to continue? But you know whether the people would like us to continue or not, I'm going to anyway. Because you know why? Because I just think it's a blessing. <laughs> it's a blessing on every in every <laughs> way that I'm just going to um are we going to just do the next podcast whether the people say they want it or not? So we'll just do it and we just hope and hope that what we're doing, what we're sharing with each other about the treasures we're finding, we hope that others will be blessed by it so we can share the blessing, right? Absolutely. 
Okay, good. I'm going to say goodbye now, and thank you to those who have joined us. Thank you to all of you. We appreciate and value your time and spending this time listening to this podcast. We hope you'll share it with others who you think might value, you know, to have some value from it or get some value from it. And we also do hope that you'll join us at the next podcast because we really do want to share the blessing. So until then, please keep safe and keep smiling and keep strong. And we hope that we can hear some good read aloud testimonies from you as well, because that'll be fun for us to share. Keep spreading the blessing. So until next time then, bye for now.